Hey, my fellow golf ball addicts, welcome back to the channel. Got another review coming up for you here today, and this one is the Wilson Duo Soft Plus. Now, um, I did the Duo Optics a while back, and uh, basically I told you in that review that this ball is pretty much the same thing. There's a slight difference. The, the matte version, which is the optics and all the bright neon colors, is a 40 compression. This one is a 35, which is pretty darn low. I mean, I think the lowest I've ever seen is 29, so 35 is just about as low compression as it can get. So I imagine it is for the slower swingers, maybe some mid-swingers. We'll see how it does with my modest swing speed of 92 with a driver, 93 with a driver. Um, but I'm interested to see. Now, this one comes in at a price point at $22.99, just like the Optics does. So you're getting about, you know, $2 a golf ball just under that. So a really good value there, two-piece. I imagine, you know, it's going to have a lot of spring in it, a lot of bouncy ball effect. Um, yeah, but Wilson's kind of been a roller coaster. We've had some really amazing ones and we've had some terrible ones. So let's see how this one goes. Let's first start off by going out to the chipping and putting green and seeing how we did out there. All right, so real quick, I forgot to actually do the design of the golf ball, which isn't like me, but we'll just touch on that real quick before we get into the chipping and putting. So on the front there, you see that Wilson crest. It looks really good. I like the red and black. It's a really basic design that Wilson does, but they keep that sophisticated look. On some of those cheaper golf balls, they were having like the really like uh, more uh, cheap looking, you know, in your face infomercial type designs, but this is just right back to the basics. You know, Wilson does a really classy, sophisticated uh, with their font style and everything. It just looks really good. It feels really good too. And then if we come over here on the side, um, I would prefer a thicker line for this alignment tool. However, I will say that the letters, as you can see, are proportionate. So when you are lining it up, it actually is easy to look down and see up in line. Um, a lot of golf balls are going to that thick, bold black line or something similar to that, and I like that a little better. But this actually works. It's a lot better than when you have you know words that are completely different sizes or uh, the, the font's different and, and the arrows that get from bigger to small. Um, I didn't have any trouble lining it up, and I was able to sink quite a few putts. So um, overall, pretty good design. All right, so out here with just a tiny bit of daylight left with, of course, the uh, Wilson Duo Soft. Now, the first thing I noticed about this one is it didn't spin as much as the optics. Um, I honestly thought this one would catch a little bit more because it actually is coated, but the matte actually, again, time and time again, matte balls seem to catch the green a little bit better, and that's the case here. This one just had a lot of release after the checkup, and there wasn't much checkup to be had. If you do hit it perfect and you hit it solid, you do get a tiny bit of checkup, but anything beyond that, that golf ball is going to release pretty hard and keep on rolling. Of course, it feels soft around the green because it's a 35 compression. So yeah, it feels like a bouncy ball. You're not going to get a lot of feedback from it. The putter does feel nice though. Um, it checks all the boxes. It doesn't do anything spectacular there, but you hit the ball and honestly, it feels really, really soft as you would expect. And you hit it off the toe and it feels mostly soft with just a slight kind of press to let you know that, hey, you didn't hit it off the center. So again, nothing spectacular, but it checks the boxes like it needs to and uh, it performs for a two-piece golf ball, especially for the price point. Okay, so two-piece golf ball, that isn't uncommon. I wish you know, I had a little bit better, but hey, like I said, nothing too crazy as far as turning me away from the golf ball. Let's get into these numbers. This golf ball feels super soft. It's extremely springy, not much feedback to be had, but that's to be expected. It's a very low compression. So getting in with the 9-iron, 92.3, very respectable above average, 126.9, 120.7, uh, which those numbers are actually average and slightly below, I mean, basically just average. Um, now, that's interesting that the ball speed was better, but when you look at the launch angle, it was a little higher, so I think you are getting some good spin there. Um, I don't know exactly what the number is. My machine doesn't tell me on a 9-iron, but I will guess based on the numbers that it is spinning quite a bit. You're going to be able to get it to stop, no problem. A lot of people are concerned about that with two-piece golf balls, but you don't have to worry about it here. Um, and it did launch high, so it'll hold a green pretty well. Um, those numbers are nothing crazy, just average. Uh, I, I did expect them to be a little better. Usually with a nine iron, I get a little bit better compression out of like really soft golf balls, uh, but I didn't get that here. So let's go with a seven iron. Let's see if we did any better there. 6,539, which is just slightly above average what I get with a spin, uh, but it's a very high spinning ball, so that kind of reiterates what I just said about the 9-iron. This golf ball does spin. 109.3 on the uh, the ball speed, I've, I think I've increased my ball speed a little bit. My average used to be 106, 107, but now I seem to be getting in the 109 to 110 range, so I'll have to kind of work on that, you know, make sure I don't get too fast because my channel's revolved around modest and slow swingers, so I, I might have to 
dial it back a little bit, but 109.3 is actually the lowest I've gotten out of the last few reviews, so nothing spectacular there, but not a bad number. 162, 151.5, 19.3, so it had a high launch, not super high, but a high launch, and then those those distance numbers are, are slightly above average what I normally get, so nothing, nothing to qualm at there. I like that it can hold a green. I like that it gets high up in the air. A lot of people are worried that when you have a two-piece golf ball, you're not going to get that height and that spin to really hold that green. Um, they're worried about it kind of rolling to the back, but you don't have that issue here. Getting into the five hybrid, we're looking at 4,025, which is average uh, uh, spin for that club, 118 on your ball speed, 194.1 on your distance, 180.1. So all those numbers are just slightly better than average. Again, it's very consistent. So what I like about this so far is it does have a pretty good amount of forgiveness, I noticed when I was testing it, and everything's really consistent. I mean, I'm getting slightly better than average across the board. Sometimes you'll notice, and depending on the review, you'll see I'll have a golf ball that'll just be an A++ on the seven iron, and it'll be a B on the nine iron, and then it'll be a, you know, A on the driver, but, you know, on the hybrid, it'll be a C, you know, and there's just so much inconsistency and you're like, well, you're like, do I want to trade this for that? Do I want to trade that for this? No, we don't want that. We want an all around golf ball. And so far, this has been across the board, either average to just barely above average across all clubs. Really good. Hopefully it can continue that with the driver. So moving into the big stick, 29, 24 on your spin. So slightly uh, above average on the spin there, a little high. Uh, 241.2, which again, slightly better than average. 134.4, 220.7, and 14.9 are literally all slightly above the average. I mean, almost to the exact degree. Like percentage-wise, they're almost exactly the same. Um, that's really interesting to see. So again, the distance across all the clubs was very consistent. I love the forgiveness. Um, this is a really interesting golf ball here based on these numbers. Let me get into the durability real quick and then I'll give you my closing thoughts based on that. That's, that's very interesting. So uh, durability wise, if you look at this, you'll see some marks there, but honestly, it just feels really good. If you feel it and you close your eyes and you don't even imagine there's any dirt on it, it feels brand new. It feels right out the package. Excellent durability there. Most of the golf ball doesn't even look like it's been touched. Um, there's just that one little area right there you can see that's got a little bit of scuffing right there. But other than that, it looks really good. Even my golf dot on the side there mostly stayed intact except for one little tiny piece at the bottom. Um, so yeah, that's really impressive. That's almost a perfect score. That's about as good as it gets really, to be honest with you. Okay, so do I recommend this ball? Where does it fall? Well, this is actually a really interesting golf ball here. So the Wilson Zip, which has been the best Wilson I've tested so far, and honestly, probably one of the best uh, two-piece golf balls I've tested, period. Um, but it kind of blew me away with its numbers. It was so fast. It was so far. It was so, it, it, span, it, it spun well for a golf ball being two-piece. It just really had, it had so much forgiveness. So I hit off the toe, you lost like two or three yards. It was just incredible. Um, there was a lot of wow with that golf ball for sure. There was a lot of it. This golf ball, there's no wow, but it just does everything really well. Um, not super well, but it does everything well enough. I will say that based on that, these numbers, you could even consider them average. Let's just pretend for a second that everything across the board we saw today was even just right average with what I get. The fact that it was consistent is a big deal. I mean, a lot of golfers need forgiveness. A lot of golfers need consistency. You know, knowing you're going to get the same reaction with a hybrid as far as a seven iron or, or a nine iron is good. It's going to maintain your average. You know, you're not going to, you're going to know what your distances are. It's hard going out there sometimes and being like, well, you know, this is the, this is the max fly X. I lose a little bit on my nine iron, but I gain on my seven. Okay. So this is normally, and you're having to do calculations in your head. When you have a nice, consistent golf ball and you just step up, up and you're like, oh yeah, 125, that's my nine iron, 100%, like let's go. I know that's that, that does help. It really does and a lot of golfers need that type of consistency. I've never seen anything perfect that as much as this has. Um, I've seen some really consistent golf balls. I've seen some, you know, amazing golf balls with really high rewards and really high risk. I've just seen some terrible golf balls, but I've never seen one that was able to consistently just give the same type of performance and numbers across every club that I hit with it. So I do recommend it. If you're looking for a two-piece golf ball, you're looking for consistency, forgiveness, maybe you tried the zip and you didn't like it that much, um, I would definitely recommend trying the optics, or not the optics, well, well the optics, yes, because the optics was good too, but the Duo Soft Plus as well. Um, it did perform a little bit different than the optics. I didn't get this 
type of consistency. I mean, it was good consistency, but I think you're good either way there. $21.99 a dozen is a really good price for them. Um, you could get them in the funky colors if you want to and try them out. But overall, yeah, it gets a recommendation from me. It's a worth at least trying out. Guys, as always, keep watching to keep saving, keep learning. Until next time.